Hey everyone, welcome to Shelly Saves the Day. Today we are tackling a bunch of ways and keyboard shortcuts to up your game and speed efficiency in Final Cut Pro. I hope you're excited for this. I hear you, all of you, with your Give Us More Final Cut Pro stuff. So I thought this would be a good one to improve efficiency. So let's get into it. Okay, here we are in Final Cut Pro in any project, doesn't really matter what it is. One thing that I absolutely love if you are looking down on your timeline is this scroll bar. If you don't have one, I'm gonna show you how to get it because it doesn't come standard. You actually have to do a trick to go get it. So let's do that. We're gonna go up to the Apple menu and then we're gonna go to System Preferences and then General. And then you're gonna go and make sure that the Allow Scroll is always on. So you'll see that if you take it off, the scroll bar in the bottom of Final Cut Pro goes away. It comes in so handy. It's just a quick little thing that's not even inside of Final Cut Pro. It's pretty much inside of the accessibility options inside of that. So make sure that is turned on so that the easiest thing you can do is come down here, grab this bar and shuffle back and forth. Okay, now speaking of the timeline, since we're here, let's move into the next tip. If you wanted to expand your timeline, you're always going to be able to do that with keyboard shortcuts. I'm also gonna show you how to create your own keyboard shortcuts, but we're gonna start with this one. Command plus on your keyboard is going to increase the size of your timeline. That way you can actually see what's going on. Now. Conversely, if you wanted to scroll down, you can also do command minus. That is going to make it if you want to make it really small or as large as you want. So obviously you can see how small all of those clips are and you have this entire beautiful timeline. So what do you want to do? You want to just automatically extend your clips to that length. Hit shift Z. It's going to then spread it out. So you're going to see all of your project in your window. This comes in really handy because no matter how long your clip, it's always going to try and condense it into your timeline. So I think that is a really good one as well. Now, speaking of timeline, one thing that you can do when you're editing is make sure you are not playing back in real time because, oh my goodness, that is just, it's gonna take you twice as long basically to edit. I'm gonna bring down this volume real quick so you don't have to hear anything that's playing. But basically hit the space bar to start playing a clip and then hit the L, that way it's going to actually play it in double speed. And then you hit that space bar again and you can then go ahead and stop playback as well. Now one thing, I'm gonna bring this volume bar back up real quick just so I can show you something. I'm gonna go command plus, let's go to the very end here. So you can see the very end of this clip where the audio is going to trail off. One thing that's actually really, really helpful for people is basically going to be able to trim that clip up to a specific spot. So I don't really know what's happening here in the audio, but I'm just gonna say it's like right here. What you traditionally might do is command B for like the blade tool, or you can just do B if you already have a keyboard shortcut, which I'll show you how to do. And then you can go ahead and grab it and delete it, something like that. Now and Command Z will undo anything that you just did. But I'm gonna undo that cut as well. One thing that you can also do is if you set up your keyboard shortcut, you can actually just hit the bracket on whichever end you're in and then bam, it will also cut it off. No need to uh, split the clip and then grab it and then delete it. You can actually just have it automatically come in as well. One thing I have done is I've changed my default so that the background is going to show the window as a checkerboard because I use dark mode dark mode for the win, but also the video can be dark if you're not exactly sure how large the video is. Sometimes having a checkerboard or a white background in the playback window will make it so that if you're resizing things, then you know that you have something filling the entire screen. So that's just a separate thing right there. All right, so I'm gonna bring this back. Now, another thing that you can do, I am just going to cut up some clips real quick. Um, I'm just hit B here. I'm just gonna grab this. I'm Command Scene and Command V. So like I said, I don't really care what's going on in this clip, but one thing we had talked about this, make sure you grab all of these. One thing you can do if you want to grab a whole bunch in a row, go ahead and hit down the shift button and then click and it's going to select everything in a row. And if you don't want, if you just wanted, let's say every other clip, you can hit down the command button and then just select the clips that you do want to highlight. So there you go. So now you can see it's clips two and clips four. You can also um, just click somewhere else to kind of get rid of it. And like I said, command and command, make sure you hold it down and then it's gonna select just the clips that you want, okay? So one thing you can do here, in this case, I'm gonna hit shift because I want all of these clips and we're gonna go into a command G or a G in my case, which I don't know if you saw that, but it adds a little rubber band around the entire thing. It's basically making a storyline with the four clips or however many clips that you have because I'm gonna undo this real quick so I can show you what happens. If you were to come in here, tell me if this happened to you, and you're starting to edit your clips up top and here you go, and then you're like, oh shoot, now I've got a big 
big hole right here in the center and I don't want that because I want the other ones to snap into each other. So we're gonna go back on that and then you're gonna see once we select all of these and then we do that command G, bam. Uh, sorry, G in my case, it has a little rubber band around the entire thing. Let's say we go into the center and we drop one of these. You see what I'm saying? There's no space here. It is going to snap all of that stuff together, which is really, really awesome because this comes in handy whenever you're using it as an overlay and you don't wanna have breaks and like your B-roll or different things going on. So that is an easy trick right there. All right, so for the next thing here, let's just say that we have something that we've done on here, um, some sort of special effect. Let me just grab one of these clips here and do something. Let's, um, let's just do a zoom in or something on this. I'm gonna select a random clip here. I am going to click on the transform tool and let's just say I'm going to, there you go, make this one bigger. I've zoomed in on it, right? Now you can see if we're scrubbing through the top, it is zoomed in on the first one and then it's not zoomed in on the second, third, or fourth, right? So what you wanna do is make sure that first clip is highlighted. We do Command C to copy, and then we're gonna come over here, select those three other clips right there in a row with the shift and dragging. You can totally do that. And then we are going to hit Command Shift V. Command Shift V. It's gonna come up with a window and ask you what do you want to actually do? These are attributes or effects. So I'm gonna say I want the um, the position, the scale. You can actually then decide I don't want all the special effects or if I just want some of the things like maybe you have color grading but you don't want audio tricks, whatever else it is. So once we paste these attributes on, once you start to scroll through these, right? There is no janky zoom in, zoom out anymore because they all have the same effects applied to them. So this comes in really handy if you've also done something like to a whole bunch of your clips, let's say color grading, anything like that, you don't have to create a compound clip and then apply these things and then try and break things apart. You can actually just apply all of these attributes to the clips at the same time, which is awesome. Okay, so one thing that's going to happen very often is you've got a whole bunch of clips that you are bringing in, you've brought them into your library, but you know that probably of that 20 minute clip, you may only want 10 minutes or there's something in the middle, especially that you really, really want. We're gonna go in and create basically a range that we're going to import. And this is how we do this. We're gonna go up to the clip that you want. Let's just say it's this one here and we are going to click on it. You can see now that the whole box is yellow. So what you do is you scroll to the point where you wanna start. Let's just say it's right here and we're gonna hit the I button. That is going to create an in point. This is basically doing an in-app little cut before we even get started. So you're gonna go ahead and be able to scroll through here and say, hey, I think right here where the things come off straight is we're gonna hit O for out point. So now you can see of, oh, you can't see because I'm standing on the, I'm sorry. All right, now that I'm actually in the correct spot and you can see the clip above is highlighted, you can see that the clip is actually longer than what is selected. So once you see that, you can actually drag that down. And instead of a clip, you're gonna see this clip here, which is 9.12 seconds, but you can see here that the clip is actually 11.02 seconds. So that way you know you only took the in and out point from the clip up above. Now, if you wanted to create a group with this, if you wanna add this to the group, you're gonna select this, you're gonna shift on all of these and G. See, now you have a blank space in here. Sometimes you may not want it completely to snap. It's going to create a group from where it is. And then if you actually decide that you're going to bring this open, you're going to maintain the space and gap that you already had in there. Now, one thing is you can actually go in, delete this, and all of a sudden it's gonna snap back into place. But this also brings in the point sometimes what happens when you actually want to insert a blank space. Thanks, Taylor Swift. Okay, so to insert a blank space into your timeline so that you know your snapping doesn't get all messed up or so that you can maintain stuff like this, maybe you're cutting to a beat or something like that, or maybe you're even doing like a back and forth where you're going to fill in those little placeholders later. Here's what you're gonna do. Go to a spot, option command W in here. Now you're gonna see the clip below, it's gonna do it, but it, you see this, it actually, it says placeholder on it. It's just got blank generic type of little people on it. So you can go in later and then replace this clip with something else. So this is also really good. You're doing those TikTok back and forth transitions. You can do that. If you wanna take that placeholder and bring it up into the group up above, you can certainly do that. And there you go, now you have that. You can also shorten this, bam. 
right there. So that's really cool too. All right, so now that we've also done a range on the in and out and you kind of understand what that means, you're just taking a select portion. I'm also gonna show you what that looks like when you come down here and you wanted to export, let's say a one minute clip or trailer or something for your project. Instead of creating a new project, copying it and taking out just the one minute that you want, here's what you can actually do. Go in and hit the R or range tool basically. It's gonna activate that. You're gonna be able to drag and drop what you want and then you can see that this point right here let's say it's around three seconds if you go to export your file even though the project is almost two minutes long you can see that the range that was selected is three seconds so that means you can export a small portion of the video without having to copy a new project or export the whole thing so absolutely that can come in really really handy all right, now I did mention that you can go in and create your own keyboard shortcuts where you're gonna go Final Cut Pro, you're gonna go up to the commands button and you're gonna go to customize or you can import ones if people already have created a bunch of them. And you can also export if you're taking this profile from somewhere else. I'm gonna go ahead and go into mine. It's called Upgraded Defaults. I've named my keyboard. So I named my keyboard shortcuts, basically an entire set of them for when I'm editing here into Upgraded Defaults. We're just gonna go into the customize. This is gonna bring up your uh, keyboard and it's going to tell you what happens if you hit so certain buttons so one of the keyboard shortcuts that you're probably very familiar with is the command B which is the blade tool so it just gives you that little slice so one cool thing that you can do is instead of hitting command B you can actually just program your keyboard to do B and instead of then bringing up the blade tool which it's programmed to do it will just make a slice for you right there so yeah you press one less button but doing this hundreds of times for any project, it's it adds up. So let's just say here, if you select the letter B, you're gonna see where the modifier is. So the modifier means no command, shift, option, none of those types of, it's just the letter. So if you hit B, that is going to do the blade. Whereas in the regular defaults, it would activate the blade tool. So it would do the blade tool and then you would still hit, you know, maybe command B if you wanted the slice or something like that. But here I've modified it. And the way that you do that is then once you look at it here, this is going to tell you all the things that are associated with this letter B. But if you wanted to, then you would say, hey, this is under editing maybe. And you know, this is the blade. So you can see here that there's no modifier and it's letter B. But what you can do is if I wanted it to be command B, you type in what you want the keyboard shortcut to be. And then it will say, hey, are you trying to reassign? And I'm gonna hit cancel because I like it the way that it is. So that's how you do it. Once you select on, these are all of the different commands that you could put into a shortcut. Not everything has to have a sh keyboard shortcut. You can just leave the defaults that are here. You can memorize them if you want. Apple also has an entire list you can go download, but here you go. You can see all of these for blading um, and blade all is kind of a cool one. So if you have a whole bunch of things stacked together, you can blade through all of them at the same time. So that's kind of cool. So that is kind of how you can come in here and then customize your workflow. So one thing that I've done, so if you don't wanna have to go through the menu and then be like, oh, it's under editing, it's under viewing, it's under, you know, that kind of thing. You can actually just, if you already know sometimes one of the keys that is involved in that keyboard shortcut, click on that. So I just redid one to two. So this is again, going to tell you all of the different things that are associated with that number. So if you come up here to two, I went ahead and redid mine. So I have now command two, it is going to do a clip at double speed. And so logically, because there's a two, four and eight, which are the defaults in Final Cut Pro, I've actually done it as command two for 200 speed or twice as fast, command four for 400 speed, and then command eight for 800 speed. You could also then do it for a custom time as well. So these are just the different ways that you can do this. One thing that I talked about before was that trim and that trim, instead of having to hit command and the bracket, you can actually, I changed mine to just be the bracket so that it cuts it off at the beginning. You can also do one at the front as well. So once you do that, you'll hit save. And then I like to always just close Final Cut Pro and relaunch it so it has time for all those changes to register. Now I think I did tell you that when you have a combined group clip, right, you can move the entire clip as a group or you can actually then decide to break a clip out and you're actually just gonna grab one of these and bring it outside of the rubber band so it will no longer be part of that connected clip. So now you can see it's gonna allow you to have a space. There you go. Get it really close up to that end and it's going to 
get back into the rubber banded group as well. Those are some of my very favorite keyboard shortcuts for speeding up editing inside of Final Cut Pro. I mean, I do have more, so if you want more, let me know, drop a comment, we'll make another video on this. I hope this is helpful for all of y'all who are using Final Cut Pro. I've been hearing you, yes, we're doing fin Final Cut Pro, okay, I hear you. If you've never joined the family, make sure you ring that bell and subscribe so you can be notified when I'm putting out new videos. Also, we have channel memberships here. If you're interested in that, there's a button down below. It will tell you all about it. Special shout out on screen every single time to all of my Platinum channel members. So thanks to Buddy for being part of that. I appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you follow me also on my socials. I will keep you updated when I'm posting new ones. Thanks for hanging out with me, everyone. I will see you in a video very soon. See you later.